Welcome to Tank Talk, folks. So excited to be here with you today to talk all about the aquarium hobby and how it's affecting people's lives all over the world. My name is John. I am joined by my beautiful wife today. Thankfully, she's back. Lisa's with us. Hello. And we are going to talk today about how to redecorate your aquarium without killing all of your fish. This is a really, really good question that came from our members only discord and we are going to get into that. But before we do, you, my lady, have some product, new product announcements to do for the website. I'm really excited about this because I've been telling John for a while, we need to start selling more um, of the dark water type uh, botanicals. botanicals. Yeah. So I thought it'd be great to bring in the uh, liquid gardens, uh, alder cones and the lotus pods. And the really awesome thing about it is we know the owner, he reached out to us and I was like, this is perfect timing because we were talking about doing this anyways. Uh, we got some more uh, catapa leaves by Liquid Gardens and I'm really excited about this one because I really love chola wood and so will your shrimp. We've got two sizes, this one. Six inch. Yep, and three inch. And they're really cool. Like I said, we're excited to be carrying them. And the lotus pods, those are so neat. Like if you have shrimp, I mean, what can I say? They're gonna love it. <laughs> shrimp, betas, anything that, uh, that you know, loves the dark water stuff. And there's millions of other different types of fish too. Yeah, you don't have to just have, it's not just for dark water aquariums. I say that, but it's not. It's not just for um, keeping a dark, dark water aquarium. It's for a lot of different uh, fish out there, your little nano fish. And, you know, I, I say shrimp because they absolutely love these things, so. Yep. I'm really getting into the shrimp these days. <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. And, and like you said, it, it's somebody that we know. This is a new company, but it's somebody that we've known for a long time that mm -hmm. owns it. And uh, really glad to support a good business as well as a friend. So right. that's a very cool thing. All of those things are available on the website now. One of the things I love about it is... We're never going to run out of catapa leaves again because we'll either have the Fritz ones or we'll have those or we'll have both. So you take your pick and get whatever you want. Uh, so that's very cool. And we're probably going to be adding some more. Uh, they have more products other than what we have now. But we thought we'll start off with this, see how it goes, and then add some more things on there. The botanicals world of aquariums is crazy the, the amount of things that are available to put in the aquarium so and you um, know uh there are some things that people don't even realize that could be in your backyard i use magnolia pods and mm -hmm. my shrimp love them of course you want to clean them make sure you know there's nothing on them but uh my magnolia pods are a hit in some of my tanks with my shrimp yep and magnolia leaves too you use yes, from I, our not everybody has magnolia trees we did not plant ours they were here when we moved in but yeah. uh but yeah that's that's another great thing and uh if i didn't feel so weird about it i would bag up the magnolia pods and sell them on the website <laughs> we have a huge supply of them that is for sure every fall and they actually year round they fall yeah. off of those trees so uh, very cool. Yeah, all on the website right now. Go on there and get them. Um, this is another thing to update you on before we get into the main topic. And that's what you're looking at right now. No, not me. Nothing's changed with me. But you see behind me a completely different appearance than what you saw before. Uh, I cannot express to you in words how happy I am with what is going on behind me. As I was editing last week's podcast... There was a couple of, not last week's, the week before, whatever it was, last time we had this angle, there was a couple of times where one of the bikers swam by and it was just like this huge plume oh, yes. of gnarliness flying around the tank. That has been settled now. And I added the substrate to this last weekend, not 
last weekend when you're watching this, but real time last weekend and the fish have been loving it. Look how active the bikers are right now as we speak. The ornate is chasing the Lepredi around. Not sure why he's doing that, but oh. uh, but that's what's happening there. And uh, I've never seen him do that before. Yay, the things that can happen <laughs> on camera. But they, the bikers are out. They're much more active now. Um, yeah, not sure why that's happening. If you're listening to this on the audio podcast, I have three Bashirs, bikers, I call them bikers, and uh, as we started recording here today, one of them has started to, he's just said, you know what, I'm going to chase the other one around. And it's a little bit annoying and That's very distracting. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it could be a breeding thing. I, well, I hope not. I mean, that'd be cool, but I hope not. They're two different fish and now they're laying together. So I don't know. Mm. These are These are weird fish, but... One of the cool things about doing this, uh, the ornate biker, which if you're watching this in video form, it's the one I'm pointing to right now. Uh, that is the newest addition to the tank. And he is a hider. He likes to hide all the time. And he would hide behind the big piece of wood, which is not actually wood that you see behind me. And it was really, it bothered me. I hated that because I want to see him. Look how gorgeous he is. I mean, he is stunning. But he would hide behind there all the time. And the other thing that was going on, I'm going to explain all of this in the video that we're going to do on this substrate. But my Tiger Albino Oscar right here, front and center, has a lot of damage to his forehead. And that was from him trying to go underneath that piece of wood. So right. those two things right there made me want to do one of two things. Either get rid of that piece of wood or make it so that they can no longer do that. And if you look you can see it is now buried in the substrate. And so they, they, the biker cannot go behind it anymore and the Oscar can't hurt himself by trying to go under it. So I that was, things, that substrate solved a lot of problems. Yeah, I was really uh, worried about him when I came out and I saw that he had some damage on his head and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it was obvious though what had happened, he had, got caught in the wood um, and trying to go underneath of it, probably knowing him trying to get some food or something. And he damaged himself. Um, it, it really did look like hole in the head, but we knew it wasn't. But uh, yeah, I think it was, I think with, you know, just doing what we do, keeping the water clean and doing the water changes it helped heal him up pretty quickly i didn't even have to add salt or medication or anything and he's healed up really well yeah he's not a hundred percent and you can't see it because of the glare in in the video here but he's not a hundred percent but he's probably 80 percent better than he was yeah when he first got damaged it, he didn't even skip a beat he didn't like get all yeah, he you didn't know show any symptoms yeah, at all yeah he ate like normal and everything so i think doing what you did was the absolutely it was the right thing to do and it it's helped him <laughs> yeah and the thing is this piece of wood is not a piece of wood it's a man-made piece from universal rocks and when you touch it, it feels very much like a piece of stone and it's very rough. Mm -hmm. So for him to try, and we say him, I don't know if it's a male or a female, but for that Oscar to try to swim underneath there was like rubbing his head up against sandpaper. And that's why that happened. And so can't do that again. Uh, again, gonna be doing a video all about the whole saga that I've had with this tank and with the substrates. Uh, I think I'm done with the tank now, and I think that's how I'll be ending the video. Hey, this project is done, and that's exciting because this is my favorite tank in the world, and it's a tank that I have battled ever since I got it. Uh, well, maybe not ever since I got it, but after having it for a little while, adding the bikers and all of the mess that comes along with them, it's been an absolute struggle. And so to have that chapter closed and be happy and thrilled with it the way it is, I, I I just it's a relief it's a huge relief so you know uh there's a lot of stuff going on back there I don't know if you caught that but uh the Severum was over there dropping some eggs and oh. the Oscars were over there eating them oh no yeah 
But, I mean, that's not unusual for, like, the severums to breed because we've had them do that before. Yeah, they've laid in egg, eggs in there many, many times. But I've never watched, uh, I've never watched the Oscars eat them as she was releasing them. <laughs> Oscars are very good for a lot of things, and population control is one. <laughs> I mean, wow. maybe they're uh, maybe they're hungry right now. Maybe we should feed them when we're done recording this. But anyway, very excited about that. Excited about the new products. Excited about the the new addition to this tank, it, and it just looks so good behind me. It looks so much better than it did before. So, yeah, very very pleased with that. Now let's move on to the main topic. Uh, this is something that came to us, as I said in the intro, from our members only Discord. If you don't know what that is, we have channel memberships available on YouTube. This is not something you have to do. It is something that is a, uh, a paid subscription. And one of the things that comes along with that is access to the members only Discord. And I have a page in there, or what do they call it? Um, I forget what they call it on, um, on Discord, but... I have a, a section in there dedicated strictly to ask or, or ideas for this podcast. It's actually titled ideas for the live stream, which has now become the podcast. So I'm going to have to change that. But that's where this came in. And it is from, I don't know how to say the name, uh, K-A-S-T-E 69. Kasty? Kast? Kaste? Kast? Kast? I'm going to say cased 69 because I need to say something. And that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, this person said how to totally redo a tank without killing your fish and plants. I so want to redo one of my 55 gallons, but don't want to hurt my fish. Um, <laughs> welcome to fish keeping. This is something <laughs> I said to you not three minutes ago this tank is finally done i'm so happy i'm so relieved but we all know that any aquarium that you have is done until you get bored of it and you want to switch things up again believe me i get it i don't know how many times in the last 11 years or however long we've had our youtube channel i have said this is it we're done we're not doing anything anymore. And then, you know, three weeks later, we're like, hey, guess what? We're redoing everything. It is so, so normal. Right. You, th this is a hobby that it's, it's never not changing, whether you're adding equipment, uh, a new light, new filtration, new decorations, new fish. There's always something that can be done. And to say that a tank is done and you're never going to touch it again is absurd. We're all guilty of that. This tank behind me will probably look different in videos in the future than it does right now. But for now, I'm really, really happy with it. I hope it stays that way. I think um, out of everything you've done with it, I think this is the best. I, I really do. I liked it with sand, but it just didn't work. Yeah, uh, it was Bare terrible. bottom, just... <sighs> didn't work <laughs> so. I, I like the look of a bare bottom tank it's hard to keep it clean especially when you've got yes. seven hogs in there that you know eat and poop non-stop all day long and when they poop they poop big so i mean bare bottom in certain types of setups with certain types of fish is great discus for example uh, but for them you know it's a great look if you want to clean it every single day and i, I mean I don't know how many times I did a water change in that tank and then 15 minutes later, it's like, really? Like yeah. you can barely even tell it's that true. I did any work in there. Uh, I, think, but I think the most success I've had with discus has been with a, I'm not gonna say bare bottom, but nothing but a piece of, couple pieces of driftwood and substrate, that's it. No plants, nothing. I, I think you get into a whole nother type of situation when you start having to take care of the plants and then the discus and you know i i am a firm believer that discus like clean pristine water yep and when you have plants they need fertilizer and fertilizer is fish poop and it's like i don't want to keep that fish poop you know in the tank 
with my discus. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the point is we are all evolving in yes. this hobby and what we've done right now that we're super happy with can be changed blink of an eye. You never know when you're going to get that bug up your butt and you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to change everything about what I have going on. Mm -hmm. I've done it a million times and, uh, and you know, everybody I know that's been in this hobby has done it a million times. Um, and so that, that is very normal and we all do it. However, how many times have you, I know this story for uh, it's, there's no way I could count how many times I've heard this story. How many times have you heard the story? You know, everything was great until, you know, my, the fish were all getting along. Everybody was happy, healthy. The tank was thriving. My plants were growing out of the tank. Everything was just perfect. And then I added that fish or then I moved that thing or I changed up the filtration and everything fell apart. This is a story that has been told 150 million times in this hobby. Everything was fine until. So I completely understand one, wanting to make changes to an aquarium because, you know, maybe you only have one or two and it's like, well, I've been looking at the same thing here for however long it's time to make a change. I totally understand wanting to do that. And I also completely understand the, 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 the nervousness that you have, the concern that you have of how that might uh, affect the balance and, and everything that's going on in your tank. So let's talk about that. Uh, let's, let's go over the biggest things to be concerned about and, uh, and, and my personal belief as to what we should do. But let me say before you get into that, I think there are two different situations that you need to think about. Sometimes you, you do need to redecorate and sometimes you shouldn't redecorate. And I mean this, uh, okay, so what I'm trying to say is you may have some aggressive fish like African cichlids and you need to redecorate because you need to try to figure out, you know, they're fighting or whatever. And reset, reset yeah, the, the hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I was trying to say. So <laughs> that's why we make a good team. Redecorating your tank might be beneficial, uh, in curbing aggression. And like you said, um, reset the hierarchy yes exactly <laughs> then there's a situation what where, where i would say you shouldn't redecorate and i have had uh i've had this situation happen to me and that would be with um your beta sororities the only time i've had the worst aggression with my beta sororities is when I've redecorated the tank. And I didn't even do that on purpose. It was because we moved the tank from the garage to the basement. And then we moved one from the basement to the fish house. And it's like, any time I've ever messed with that, once you get a beta sorority established and you get it straight and everybody's happy, leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Don't add more betas. I would never suggest doing that. So, you know, when, once you start it, leave it alone. Yeah, there's a lot of scenarios, uh, African cichlids being one, beta sororities, th those are both great examples where if you have a good thing going and you want to change things up, it, yeah. it might be, it, you might not want to. <laughs> I mean, leaving things alone, because again, how many times has the story started out? Everything was fine until, and yours, everything was fine until we moved it down into the basement. And then everything got to be fine again until we moved to another state and had to move it into the new fish house. Right. I mean, you know, you don't want to be telling that story that, you know, everything was fine until whatever happens. Sometimes you don't have a choice, you know, but others, you, you might want to just leave it alone. 
Yeah, I'm so thankful that we are like put. We're not moving anymore. Mm -hmm. My beta sorority is doing amazing. I was just pointing that out to you today. I said the females are all chonky. You're like chonky. Chonky. I love the word <laughs> chonky. That's a new one in my they vocabulary. They all look good. They're happy. And I, I love seeing them mingle together too. So. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that, you know, cased cased sixty nine. I'm just that's how I'm going to say your name. Um, you know, I, I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to think about it, and I want you to just just consider: Do I want to mess with a good thing? If you're wanting to redecorate simply because you're bored, I get it. But at the same time, you know. Do you want to be telling that story of everything was great until I asked KG Tropicals what I should do and they told me and I did it and then pfft, everything fell apart. So, you know, it, so many times uh, in the last 10 years, 11 years, whatever it's been that we've been, you know, advising people on the internet of keeping fish. So many times I, I've said to people, leave it alone. You know, you're, you have a good thing going right now. Don't add those more fish. Don't add another filter. Don't do that. Just consider yourself lucky. Everything's balanced. Everything's working great. Leave it alone. I've said that to people so many times because we get into this mentality of there's got to be something I could be doing that's better. I, it could be a better filter. It could be a better this, better that. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's best to just leave it alone. I think that's Stop being where so picky. I think that's where MTS comes from, too, though, because they're like, oh, so I shouldn't mess with this tank. I better get a new one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we are all looking for an excuse to get our new tank. But let's just say, you know, we got that out of the way and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, but let's just say, you know, somebody's like, hey, listen, Cased 69, Caste, whatever. I, I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in the name anymore. Uh, it's like, look, I understand what y'all are saying, but I got to make a change. Otherwise, this hobby is going to be stale for me or whatever reason. And you, you know, you, you, you have to make a change. The first thing that I want to say is a lot of people do overthink this. A lot of people are going to look at this and they're, they're going to overthink themselves to death. This is something that we all as fish keepers do. We, that's another thing we're all guilty of. We overkill things. We go too far. We overanalyze. We overplan things out. There's no such thing as overplanning as far as I'm concerned, but we go too deep for something that should be relatively simple. Uh, so, you know, don't freak out about something like this. Uh, if you want to make changes, you want to make changes. That's fine. Let's just come up with a nice plan. Let's take our time with it. And, uh, and, and don't overthink it. Don't make it complicated, more complicated than it is. If you're wanting to just add a couple of rocks to an aquarium, all you're doing is adding a couple of rocks to an aquarium. Right. You're not changing the world. You're not going to completely, you know, crash your tank from wanting to add a couple of rocks or add a, a couple of plants or something like that. Um, and that, that's the thing, like, again, I've had so many people email and they'll say, I want to add this, but I, I just don't know if I should. Again, if everything's going well, if everything's perfect, a lot of times I'll say, you know, consider yourself lucky, leave it alone. Or I'll say, hey, it's not a big deal. All you want to do is add a rock. <laughs> yeah. Come on. It, it's nothing to really freak out over. Um, don't overthink this, but if you're somebody that does want like like case 69 wants to clean the slate tear everything down start all over again we do need to to consider the number one thing that is the issue here and that is the the damage to the cycle the whole time that your aquarium's running maybe case 69's tank has been running for five years never touched a thing everything's been the same for five years which is why it's ready to to switch things up i get it but you've left it alone and and it's just i've had enough i want to completely start over again re-energize the hobby for me this is what i i want to do your tank the entire time has been becoming its own little ecosystem 
in the filter, on the rocks, in the substrate, in the plants, everything. Everything is settled in, everything's balanced, everything's great. And when you wipe the slate clean, you're removing all of that. All of that bacteria that's developed in the tank, everything that's in there, every little nook and cranny that's working to help keep everything balanced is going to be gone. And so if you're gonna do that, you have to understand that you're basically starting all over again. Well, and that's where it's important to, you know, keep that hang on the back filter or canister filter that you may have. Keep it running on the aquarium once you, you know, mm -hmm. get your decorations the way you want it. You know, keep that going. That way you don't lose your cycle. Right. Well, you're going to, the cycle is going to be impacted because you're removing all of the stuff from inside the tank. But... I, that's one of the things on my list that I was going to bring up was mm -hmm. exactly what you just said. If you have a, a, an established filter, great example are these two 125s. We, we've redone these 125s multiple times and it's never been a huge concern. Yeah, there were the times with the beta sorority that things didn't work out, but the, there's, an, there's FX4s on both of those tanks. There is a ton of bacteria. There's a ton of life in those filters and so when we did those overhauls of those tanks we would shut the filter down and leave it alone mm -hmm. not touch a thing just turn the filter off and this way all of that bacteria that's in there you're it's almost like putting quick start or fritz -zyme or something like that in your tank when you start it back up again you're starting ahead of the game you're not starting completely from scratch right. you're you have a, a nice little head start on it that's absolutely critical and once again i am glad you brought that up because you know this show just isn't the same without you in it and those are the reasons why because you bring up good points well i i remember when uh rack cross was at our house and we set up or i had to hurry up and set up a 10 gallon real quick and i had a 10 gallon kit or am i wrong was it a 20 was it a 10 or a 20? I it, think it was a 20. Yeah, it was a 20. And I was using it as a quarantine tank because I just got some rummy nose in. And I had another tank just like it with the exact same filter on it. So that tank was well established. I, you know, so I didn't have to do anything to it. Uh, but I took the filter from the existing tank, stuck it on the brand new tank put the brand new filter from that kit on the the tank that was already you know existing and stuck the fish right in there and rack was like i've never seen somebody do that in yep. 10 minutes and put brand new <laughs> fish in it and they were perfectly fine so yep. yeah i remember his shock by yeah that. It's, <laughs> and he'd been keeping fish a long time and and he didn't know that what it's not that he didn't know he had not seen somebody set up at a tank in an emergency like that right. and have it work out um, but it's true you know filters are so much of the life of our aquariums now maybe in your 55 maybe you have a hang on back or you have a couple of sponge filters or something like that running it same thing just if, if you have sponge filters in there take them out put them in a bucket let's keep things easy use yeah. water from the tank right you don't have to but use water from the tank put your sponge filters in there and just set them off to the side and let them sit there don't squeeze them out don't do anything yeah. like that just leave them alone if it's a hang on the back just turn it off and keep the water that's in there keep it in there canister filter same way then you are going to have that big head start and and i will tell you that we have done what we're talking about here shut the filter down and done a complete overhaul on the tanks right. and not had an issue. Right. However, we've cycled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tanks. We used to own a store. We had to cycle all of those tanks. This is not something that's new to us. So we know that if we're gonna drain the tank down, remove, just clean it down to the bare glass and start from scratch, we know there is gonna be an impact on the cycle we know we're going to have to monitor things and basically start from scratch. Yes, we have the boost from the filter, whatever filters we're using, but we still have to monitor things. There's no guarantees that that's going to set us straight and we're never going to have to worry about anything. We have to pay attention 
to that. And so we'll be testing the water. We'll be keeping an eye on it. We are, both of us, we're, we're, we're kind of past having to test all the time. Yeah. Even when they're brand new tanks, there are little signs, little warning signs that you can see having done this as many times as we have where it's like, oh, we need to react. We need to do something right away uh, because something's out of balance here. And that's why it's important to watch watch your fish right you know like i am one of those people that i do not believe in um feeder thing auto auto feeders i don't believe in that because i think you should go in there feed your fish every day make sure your fish is eating mm -hmm. and know your fish if you have an auto feeder then that's taken away from knowing if your fish is eating and seeing if they're okay because a fish not eating is a sign that something's up. Yep. Yeah, and you know, you do this big redecorate your fish, all of a sudden they stop eating. If it's for the first day or so, don't panic because right. you know they're getting used to their new surroundings. But if you did your redesign, your redecorate a week ago and your fish still aren't eating, that's a big, big red flag that something's wrong or the water gets cloudy or you know whatever it is, all of a sudden your fish start going to the top, they're breathing heavy, you know, you have visual cues that there's a problem here and you have to monitor those things if you're going to do big overhauls like this if you're adding a rock or you're taking four or five plants out and putting some new plants in or moving a piece of driftwood i wouldn't panic like this i, I you know obviously you're going to keep an eye on things because that's what we do as fish keepers our life is keeping an eye on what our fish are doing that's the whole game so naturally you're going to be doing that anyway but when you make big changes or even small changes you're going to want to keep an even more keen eye on what's going on with it and understand that if you're going to do a complete overhaul top to bottom even new background in the tank everything's going to change you need to approach it from the standpoint of a brand new aquarium even though you have that help from the filter and that will probably get you by but even though you have that you do still need to keep an eye on things and make sure that you're not completely screwing your your fish i'm not going to say yourself screwing your fish by making a big change like that um monitor things test 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 and and it shouldn't be that big of a deal you were about to interrupt well i think something else that's important that people should remember too is i just because they're redecorating, you know, you were saying starting all over 100%. Some people might be redecorating but want to use a lot of the stuff they still had in the yep. tank. So just like John said with the sponge filters, take a bucket or tote or whatever, put that tank water in there and put the decorations you want to keep in there in, in that tank water because you'll still have that beneficial bacteria growing on the surfaces of the driftwood and the rock. Don't clean it off. Leave it on yep. there and put it back in the tank after you fill it back up with water or, or before. I'm sorry. You know, and then put your new tank water in there. But um, you can you can get that cycle going even quicker with putting some of the old decorations back in and that goes with plants too absolutely and and the thing is like that's that's a redecorate and that's exactly what case asked about uh, i want to well it said redo that could go either way uh, that what you're talking about and you're 100 percent right is redecorating you're just wanting to switch things up move the rocks from the left side to the right side move the plants around, spread them out, uh, maybe trim them back and replant the clippings and, you know, do things like that. As far as I'm concerned, there's no concern with doing anything like that. Right. That's what we do. And you, everything that was in the tank is staying in the tank, you know, redecorating. I don't think it's a concern at all. Well, but, there is, you know, putting new plants in, uh, new pieces of driftwood, new rock, but you leave your substrate. That helps too. You know, you're not changing your substrate. You're keeping the substrate exactly the same, but you're adding all the other stuff. You still have your beneficial bacteria in your substrate. Absolutely. Yeah, the substrate is one of the key areas that you're going to have 
a lot of your bacteria. I mean, this tank back here with, I don't, I haven't counted it exactly. I think I used like 32 bags oh, of wow. substrate in that tank. Uh, it might not be, it might be 30. I don't know. It was a lot and it felt like a lot too, but I used a lot in there. And that's something that, you know, uh, two years from now, if I was to pull all of that out, I'm pulling out so much of the life that's in that tank. That would be a huge concern. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to completely redecorate this tank, take this big piece of wood out, the, the eucalyptus wood that I have, which are the only two decorations in the entire tank, and I wanted to swap them out, if I'm leaving the substrate in there like you were talking about, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be concerned about that at all. I'm going to take those two things out. I'm going to put the new things in, and, and I'm going to move on. I'm not even going to have any concern at all. And you know, a lot of that too is that's a big body of water that takes a lot to contaminate it because it's so right. much water. So that's another, uh, you know, reason why I don't have to sound the alarm on something like that. But yeah, redecorating is a completely different conversation than a complete and total overhaul, which I've done. Uh, oh yeah. W back in 2013, <laughs> way, way back. I had a 240 gallon tank, eight feet long, two feet deep, two feet tall, kind of your standard 240. And, uh, and, and I took that down to the glass, new substrate, new decorations, new everything in that tank. And with that, I had to do what I was saying before. I had to monitor things very, very closely. I had to basically approach it as if it was a brand new tank and we're starting from scratch. And the thing is, I shock a lot of people here that didn't watch those videos way back in the day, because I did do all of this on video. I put like 45 to 50 fish in that tank immediately. And they were all big African cichlids, big ones, and never had one problem. Why? Because I monitored things. I was there every single day. I kept an eye on the tank. I kept an eye on the levels. I would test it. I was there all day. Why not? Why wouldn't I test it? And I never had any problems, even adding that big of a load in there. Would I do the same thing with a 55 gallon? No. Mm. But a 240 gallon tank, you really have to have a real bad problem to have a huge ammonia spike or something like that in well, a tank that size. You basically did the exact same thing with the two African cichlid tanks back here. You started over and not the substrate, though. Oh, that's true. Now, when I when I overhauled those two tanks, um, the neither one of them I touched the substrate. All I did that's was add right. the rocks. That's right. But that's a perfect example. I'm going to put the micro microphone, put the camera on Lisa here, so you can see at least the one side of that tank. That tank was just a couple of rocks sitting right. on the substrate, and I added all of those other rocks. Was I concerned about that? No, no. I was not concerned about what were those rocks going to do? How was it going to impact the load? Because it doesn't impact the load. They're just rocks. So I didn't have any concern, just like adding the substrate in here. Is it going to really alter the tank? I can't think of any reason why it would. We didn't add to the load of the tank. We simply put something in there that wasn't in there before. It could be a concern that there were contaminants on it. Sure. But you know, you wash everything off and, and you should be good with the rocks that I put in the in the tank behind Lisa there, I soaked those rocks for like three weeks before I put them in the tank. Yeah. And, you know, made sure I, I got them cleaned off and stuff like that, and everything was fine. Um, but, you know, the, the biggest thing that I want to, to pound into Case 69's head is if you are doing that overhaul, the complete, you're taking the substrate out, you're, you know, changing everything if you're changing everything, including your filter, then you're starting over again. And, you know, you do have the threat that it could possibly impact your fish. The same way it would if you were starting a tank from scratch and buying the fish day one and putting them all in there. If you know the cycle, if you know the warning signs, if you know things to look for, the, you know, the fish breathing heavy, the gray water, you know, all of the things to look for, then you should be able to make it through that fine. But that is the most risky strategy of wanting to do an overhaul. If it's your first time doing it, 
you've never done an overhaul, a complete and total top to bottom overhaul before, I have a suggestion. And this is the kind of suggestion that I would be perfectly fine with doing now. Because I've, I'm an old man, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not in a hurry for anything. If I had a tank that looked like A, and I wanted to go to Z, I probably would not, if I was overly concerned about damaging the cycle and impact to fish and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't do the entire thing at once. Instead, what I would do is I would do it in phases and I would do that overhaul very slowly. I understand we want that instantaneous impact and, and that's cool and I, I understand it. But isn't it also cool to every week or every two weeks make a little change? You know, you're doing a little thing that's gonna, every time you walk past the tank, you're gonna look at it, you're like, oh, that, that looks really nice. I'm really proud of that. And you're having that every two weeks instead of having it all at once. You know, maybe, maybe the first week you change out your substrate. Everybody's scared to change their substrate. I get it. That is, you know, one of the most important parts in an aquarium. And changing that out is terrifying. I totally understand that. But if you're doing that, and that's all you're doing, you're not, obviously you have to remove the plants to remove the substrate, but you know, your plants are going to stay in the tank. You know, you're taking them out because you're taking the substrate out, but then you're putting them right back in. You know, that's you're, you're all you're doing is changing out the substrate. It's not as impactful as everything else with it going to be changed. I would leave a planet aquarium alone. If oh, you, have, if you yeah. have a substrate that you want to change, uh, I don't know. I would, and you have a heavily planted aquarium. I wouldn't even mess with it. Your roots are established. Uh, I agree. Leave it alone. That is a beautiful tank. If you can grow plants in an aquarium, and you can have a beautiful planet tank, why would you want to change it? Just trim it back if you need to. If you want to add a new plant in there, that's fine. But why would you want to mess with a good thing? If it's already working, leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And, and using a planted tank was a, a bad example. Because right. I agree, if you have a successful planted aquarium, and you want to change the substrate, I'm going to tell you, you're bananas. <laughs> I will not mess with any of my aquariums that I have plants in it. I will not ever change them around. And it's not because plants are these fragile things that you're going to kill them all when you do that. It's just like, why would you want to fix that? That's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I can't even think of an analogy. It's like, leave it alone. If you got all of these beautiful, successful plants, we were at a, a, a club meeting and there was a gentleman there when he did his talk. Uh, he was talking about how he had this tank that was running for 27 oh, years. Yeah, He yeah. had crypts in that tank that were massive. I've right. never seen them that big. The leaves on these crypts were like that thick and they were like a foot long. It was huge. He had no choice but to do what he did because he had a leak in the tank. It was a 27 year old, old tank. It was leaking, he tried to repair it from the outside and it just wouldn't work. And he went through the process of, of how he repaired that. Basically, what, all he did was drain the tank down, fix the leak, fill it back up again, and, and it was all fine. He didn't mess with the substrate, he didn't do anything. Because of exactly what you're talking about right now, if you've got an established planted aquarium, why in the world are you wanting to mess with that? Exactly. Sure, move the, the crypt from here to there or, or prune things down, you know, trim, trim them down. You don't call it pruning in an aquarium, do you? I, I've never called it mm -hmm. that, but you, know, you wanna trim them down and then plant the, the clippings. Sure, go for that. You ain't yeah. gonna hurt a thing by doing that. But doing a complete substrate change on an established planted aquarium, that's madness. <laughs> yeah, I would never, ever do that. <laughs> and I, I'm, I feel like an idiot uh, for having to do that. But, you know, maybe you do have that scenario where, you know, you have no choice. You have to do it. Well, or uh, maybe your plants aren't thriving because your substrate isn't the best 
substrate for your plants. So you want to switch it out and give your plants um, more of a, a chance because they're not thriving in whatever else you're using. I'm not going to name certain substrates because it sometimes works for people and yep. sometimes it doesn't. But um, I've I've or, been very successful with a lot of different substrates, honestly. Or maybe you have a gravel substrate and you want to try the Wallstead method. Yeah. Uh, you know, that to me, I don't even know how to, to, what kind of an analogy to use. That's going from okay to best. Yeah. So the plants are going to love you for that. But if you have a... But be prepared for them to take off, that's for sure. Yeah, I exactly. Can't, I mean, my plants in both of my bowls, the one that Diana did and the one that I did, they're just, they're growing out of the bowl. They're growing like crazy in there. And, you know, it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful what you wish for. Right. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I never should have brought up plants, like what, talking about the substrate with plants, because again, I mean, if you got a planted aquarium and it's successful, leave it alone. But again, you know, what I was saying before, you know, if you have gravel and you want to switch to the Wallstead method, that makes total sense. Or you have gravel and you want to switch to Eco Complete, yeah, you know. That's totally fine. But if you have EcoComplete and you want to switch to sand, come on. <laughs> like that if you're ta we're not talking about a scenario like you're talking about mm -hmm. where your your plants aren't doing well and you want to change the substrate for that. If they're not doing well in EcoComplete or or the fluval stratum or something like that, you know, we have other problems. It's probably not the substrate that's the problem there. But you know, if it's gravel and you want to switch to one of those, that makes total sense. I would not switch from a planted substrate to another planted substrate if the plants are thriving. Oh, yeah. I would just, that's one of those scenarios where I would tell you the best thing you should do is absolutely nothing at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave it alone. Don't switch it out. And she did, I, I don't know why I said she, because I don't know that she, that case 69 is a she. Um, but K69 did ask about the plants, and I think, I've, I don't know that we need to really spend any time on it. I feel like we've addressed it. Plants are very, very resilient. If you're going to pull them out of your tank, redecorate, put them back in, they're going to be fine. Yeah, they might melt back a little bit. They're like, hey, wait, what did you do here? They're going to have to get used to things just like anything else will, and unless they're a super, super delicate type of plant, you know, you might have a, a couple of weeks of them looking a little pitiful, but then they'll bounce back and, and they'll be completely fine. And I, if it's I wouldn't like worry an Anubius, that. you know, that isn't even planted, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't really have a whole lot to worry about. But uh, but again, going back to what I was saying, if you're doing things gradually to me and again, I'm an old timer. So, I, you know, I've done all of these things. And I'm not in a hurry. I, I don't need that instantaneous gratification. And little bits can be that instant gratification for me. Mm -hmm. If I if it's just, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is on the right side of the tank, I'm gonna remove the SpongeBob castle and the bubbler, and I'm gonna replace it with a couple of rocks and add some Anubias and some moss, and, and then Oh, that'll that's gonna be, be so good. pretty, and what an upgrade. Exactly. <laughs> and then, then, you know, a couple of, I'm going to let that settle in. And then a few weeks later, I'll do the other side where I remove the transformers and put in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're changing things up. You're getting that instant gratification every couple of two, three weeks. Right. Instead of doing it all at one time. Uh, that is the way that I would do it. If I wanted a complete overhaul, I understand. I just said I completely overhauled a tank at the shop, back when we had our store. I mean, yes, I've done what we're talking about here, but where I'm at now in my hobby and the way I'm doing things, if I had a tank, you know, we can't see it in the, in the screen right now, but a tank like one of these right now, very established, things are going fine. I would not do a complete overhaul on one of those tanks. I would take it step by step, little by little, take my time with it, and that's going to have 
the least amount of impact to the tank, to the cycle, to the fish. And you're doing a little bit each time, which gives you that satisfaction. That's the way to do it. The, the absolute, without even any debate, best way to overhaul a tank and have zero impact is to not overhaul the tank. But <laughs> if you insist, which I get, I totally understand, then the best way you can do it is gradually. Don't do the clean slate. Don't wipe the slate clean and start all over again. Do it gradually, bit by bit, and that is going to have the least impact. And don't mess with your filter. Leave that alone. <laughs> right. If you want, if your filter is part of your overhaul, you want to, you know, you have a, an old FX5. You wouldn't have that on a 55 if you do your bananas, but using, okay, you have a Title 55, not even a Title 55, because why would you replace that? You have an old Aquion, whatever <laughs> model number, that came with the starter kit, which was a good filter. It's been good to me for five years. That's part of the overhaul. Here's what I would do. Ooh, I know what you're going to say. First of all, I would upgrade it to a Title 55. And you would leave it on there while you're getting it going, getting a title established to the tank. You're going to keep the Aquion on because it's already mm -hmm. good. You know, it's got all the good stuff in it. You're absolutely right. But I would take it a step further. I would get the Title 55 first. And I would put that on the tank, like you said. Yeah. Running it with the Aquion. Well, that's what I was getting at. Right. I would run them both. And I would do that for a, a long, long time. Like I said, I'm, so. not, I'm not in a hurry to do anything. So I would let it run. I would do it for months. I've had driftwood soaking in my bathtub <laughs> in my house for the last month. And it's probably going to be in there for another month. I'm not in a hurry. I can put things down. We also don't use that bathtub. But yeah, it's not like he's showering. We're not standing no. over top of the driftwood while we shower. That would be... <laughs> That would be a no-no, but it's a spare bathroom. That's actually the bathroom that I put an aquarium in, but I've never taken a shower in there and I don't plan to. Maybe someday we'll remodel our master bathroom and I'll have to shower in there. But for now, I'm not using it and I've had driftwood in there for a long time. I am very patient. I can let things go for a long time and you know I'm not in a hurry to do anything. So I would put that Title 50 on, 55 on the tank and I would run both filters and I would do that for a month, two months. And then I would do my overhaul and I would leave them both on there. And then after maybe another month after the overhaul, I would pull that Aquion off. I, I would not do my overhaul and swap the filter out at the same time. That's just too risky. I would utilize both of them. Yeah, your tank is going to be over filtered for a little while, but uh, you know, it's better to it's much less impact on the tank to do that rather than uh, switching everything at one time. If you can leave your filter out of the equation, then that's fine. Uh, another strategy you could do is do your overhaul without touching the filter, wait a little while and then add that Title 55 to it. Let them both run for a while. Either way, completely fine. So that's my advice to a complete overhaul. I will let, unless you don't have anything else to add, I will let you wrap up your advice if you have anything else that you want to add. I just said I will let you. How dare I say I will let you? This is your I, show too. But. Well, I interrupted you several times and told you exactly what I was thinking. So that I've already given my opinion, so I'm done. Okay, well, very good. <laughs> then it is time. We still do not have a transition for this, but it's time for comment of the week. <laughs> okay, so this comment comes from Michael Webster, 3124. Uh, it's on the, the Simplest Planted Aquarium with Diana Walstead. He says, this was such a great video. It was very informative and I enjoyed watching the two of you get absorbed in creating a new habitat. At the beginning of the video, the conversation was a bit stiff, but by the end, it felt like I was watching a, f a family matriarch teaching one of her favorite nieces, the Nunces? 
nuances of, nuances sorry <laughs> of her chosen craft and i i picked this comment because i have seen a few people comment about you know how we were in the beginning or whatever but Diana had never done a video before. It was the first time and it was, I was even a little nervous doing a video with her because it's Diana Walsh. You're in the presence of greatness. <laughs> <laughs> we talked a lot over, you know, several weeks, a month before even doing the video, phone calls back and forth through email. We saw each other a couple times prior to the video and talked about it and I think that I think she did really well and I love that we've had so many good positive comments to the video and I, I love that she got on video and did it mm -hmm. and showed people how to do it you know not just read a book about it and she was the one that showed how to do the Wallstead method the right way. And it was just a great video. So I wanted to read that comment and tell you that I thought, you know, I thought she did a great job. And yeah, we were a little stiff at first, but we got through it. And I think by the end, I don't know, middle to the end of the video, we really loosened up. We had a lot of fun with it. And I am blessed to have her bowl that she did in the video she left it with she left it with me and it's doing great mine's doing great and i'm just so tickled by all of that and if you haven't seen that video you should go watch it because it it's a little bit longer than some of the ones we've done but uh it's definitely worth watching meet her meet diana walstead yeah what what an amazing gift it was for her to give you that bowl. But not only that, what an amazing gift it was for her simply to come here and do what she did. I mean, yeah. and you're talking about how many people, there's people all over the world that talk about the Wallstead method. Right. And then she's here. Yeah. And she's gonna do a video for us. And she's never done a video for anyone else ever, but she's gonna do one with us. So yeah, both of us were nervous. Right. She was nervous took a little bit of time thankfully I wasn't in that video so I couldn't show my nerves but I was the one filming and uh, you know it took a little bit to, to loosen up but then yeah. you know you brought things home wonderfully it was it was a great great video I'm thrilled and I want to say thank you to everybody who went out and purchased her book after watching the video I know that a lot of people watched and they've already bought the book but if you watch the video and then you purchase the book thank you so much because that means a lot to her too absolutely uh, it is if you're in a planted aquariums and you don't have her book the ecology of the planted aquarium I don't know what's wrong with you. You should buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. That's fun. I, I love it that it was a comment for you and not me. I like that because I tend to go a little bit overboard. So now it is time. I hope you're prepared for this. It's time for Lisa's World. I feel like I just did Lisa's World by doing the comment of the day. But um, okay, so Lisa's World, I've had... I've had a busy few weeks. Uh, we have a colony of cats that live across the street from our house. They live in the woods. They've reproduced and there's like so many of them now, but there are four that have really just warmed up to us and let us pet them. And I even had to teach John how to be patient because he would go, he would walk out there and they'd run away. And he's like, they just run away from me all the time. And I was like, <laughs> because you're doing it all wrong. You have to sit there and wait for them to come to you. If they're gonna come to you, they're gonna come to you. That's just the way it's gonna be. And it's so cute because he's even gotten to where he's petting them and he has a favorite and I don't know, they're all my favorite at this point, but. Um, I have two favorites. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I've named them but I've gotten pretty attached to them and I've, uh, I've got some scheduled appointments to get some spay and neuters going on because uh, to me that's very important if you're going to feed a cat you should fix a cat 
and um, one of them is pregnant as she, we speak. Well, one is super, super pregnant, and that is one of the things I was going to bring up. I, I ordered from the devil. Um, <laughs> I love I, that you call it that. <laughs> I ordered like a kennel type, a cat kennel they use in rescues because uh, the super duper pregnant female, her name is Robin. Uh, I named her Robin because there's Batman and Robin. Anyway, so. And Alfred and Selena. Selena, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Robin, I'm going to catch her and I'm going to put her in uh, the kennel so that she can have her babies in peace without having to worry about predators and that way I can keep up with her and I'm not like catching her to go get her spade and there's babies out there that I don't know where they're at so at least I'll be able to try to find them homes get her spade and then there's Selena who is obviously nursing right now she's so skinny and we try to you know I try to feed her as much as I possibly can whenever she comes up but I know she's nursing and if I can follow her into the woods one day and find her kittens I I thinking about doing that just because I'm really worried about them who knows where they are they we haven't even seen them yet but yeah I <sighs> yeah that's a that's an adorable Lisa's world, and that that could be John's world and Lisa's world wrapped up in one because I'm attached to those cats too. He really is. It's so cute. I only <laughs> named one of them, which was Selena and Alfred, because I call him Meow Meow. You call him Meow Meow. I'm tired of those generic cat names, and you're like, you've got Batman, Robin. And I suggested Selena because she she looks like Catwoman. And uh, if we got Batman and Robin, we need Selena. And then I was like, no, the gray one, you need to call that one Alfred. Originally, I wanted him to be Cal because it is a boy. I, I don't have any Superman cats. I wanted him to be Cal, but, uh, but you, we kept it in the family of Batman. And uh, yeah. I call him Alfred, but she still calls him I've been Batman. trying to do... Or uh, Meow Meow. Meow Meow. <laughs> I, and they all come to Meow Meow. I stand on the like I stand out in the in the yard and they'll be in the field like where the cotton's growing and everything and they'll sit on the edges and they wait for me to call them and they'll come out and it's so sweet. But so. what they're actually waiting for is the signal that you have put Jasper Gerald, and Gerald yeah, away Gerald and Jasper. because they will fight. Yeah. And, uh, and that, we've gotten in nice. the middle of that a couple of times, and that's been not fun. Uh, yeah. Lots of scratches from that. I'm pretty so. sure my neighbors think I'm a little mental. Um, <laughs> I'll be running through the cotton fields chasing cats. Meow, 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 <laughs> meow. <laughs> like, what is this lazy, this lazy, what is this lady doing? <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, they understand. Our neighbors understand. There's really only one set of neighbors that would be able to see us. And they're animal lovers, just like we are. I don't know how much they love cats, but uh, <laughs> they have two dogs. And, you know, they were the owners of Bob, the, the rooster that, that got killed. But anyway, it is time now for John's World. John's World. Today's, <laughs> so funny. Today's John's World is a really stupid one. Um, but it's something that I'm excited about. And you know what? At my age, listen. I'm married to my dream woman. I live in my Aww. dream house. I have a dream job. You know, it takes a lot to get me excited about other things than that because, you know, I got it made. I, I understand how lucky I am. But there's a little thing that I discovered yesterday that made me so happy. And it involves a lot of work that I'm going to have to do, but I'm excited to do it. You may not know this. Uh, we live on just about five acres in Northeast North Carolina. And uh, it's a historic property. It's on the register. And there's a lot of trees on the property that are, um, they're big, mature pecan. Um, what, why do I always forget this? What is this tree here? I keep forgetting it. We, magnolia? Magnolia, jeez. Jeez. We have two magnolia trees, six pecan, six uh, sycamore, uh, a couple of, a whole bunch of pine trees. But then we also have seven stumps on the property. Uh, five of them were here when we moved in. And two of them are from trees that 
either perished in storms while we were here or died while we were here. One of them was dead when we moved in and I cut it down. And it's been one of those things that for the entire year that we've lived here, I've said, you know, I got to go rent a stump grinder or a mini excavator or something like that. My neighbor has an excavator. I'm just, I'm not there yet with them. Like I, they're the best. Oh, I adore yes. my neighbors. Absolutely. And you know, they'll do anything to look out for us and we'll look out for them too. We're not at that point in our relationship where I could go, hey, could I borrow your $200,000 excavator right. so I could remove stumps? They have a giant excavator that you could like dig a pool with. Um, so we're not there yet. And I've just, it's just been one of those things that I've been like, you know what? I, I One of these days I need to rent a stump grinder. But yesterday was a beautiful day. First gorgeous, beautiful weather day we've had since basically May. I mean, because it's hot and humid here. Yesterday was gorgeous. And again, not yesterday when you're watching this, but yesterday from when we were film, were recording this. And, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab my shovel. I'm gonna grab my um, reciprocating saw. I'm gonna grab an ax. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna see if I can just pull one of those stumps. And it took me about 45 minutes, but one of the medium sized stumps that I got, that we have, that was here when we moved in, I went out there and I worked around it and I was able to get that son of a bitch pulled out oh. by myself. <laughs> and one of the main reasons why I was able to do it is because we live in the coastal plains, which is a very sandy soil area. So digging around here is a breeze. You know, if we ever have a project that involves digging a hole, it's not a big deal. It, it's very easy digging here. You can just dig with a hand shovel and it's no problem. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to get this stump out. But I was so proud of myself and I was so happy that I was able to go out and do that with no machinery whatsoever. Just a little bit of elbow grease. It's a good workout for me. And, uh, and I was able to get that stump completely removed by hand. And so <laughs> I'm very excited to be able to announce that I'll be doing that six more times. <laughs> well, I think it's funny because when you were out there digging, I took a picture of you and I sent it to Zen and I was like, hmm, now he's digging a hole. What did he do? Why is he digging a hole? What did he do? Digging my own grave because I did something wrong. No, in fact, I did something very good and that is the removal of that stump. I, I just, I can't tell you how tickled I am about that. Just to be able to, there's this problem staring at me in the face and to just say, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go out there. Even if it takes me a half a day, I'm gonna get that damn thing pulled up if it's the last thing I do. And this one was very easy because it's yeah. been, it had been sitting there for a long time. So it was very rotten. Yeah, so I, I want you to chunks. do that one right over there. Yeah, we have one right outside of the fish house it's, it's actually probably 30 feet from where we're sitting right now. And uh, it's one that I cut down last year. Uh, it was gonna fall and it was gonna hit the fish house. Actually, it was, it was this year, it was earlier in the year. Was it? Yeah, okay. but it kept causing problems with the driveway. And yep. we would go out like after a storm with a little bit of wind, we'd go out and there would be a limb going across the driveway. It's yep. like, come on. <laughs> And the entire tree was, it was stone cold dead. I mean, the whole thing, there was not a leaf on it. It was, it looked like something out of a Tim Burton movie. And so um, I cut it all out, but there's still a, a stump on it. And uh, that's probably, that's probably gonna be the last one that I do. Although I am somebody that usually likes to do the worst part of the project first, and then it, let it get easier as I go. I think well, I'm going to save up that one and let that one be last because it's huge. Let it huge. die more. <laughs> yeah. You know, let it really get dead. <laughs> yeah, it is huge. And, you know, there I could set them on fire and let them burn. Oh. And, you know, but I, I'm just, again, I'm not in a hurry. Oh. And I can take my shovel and my pickaxe and my axe and my reciprocating saw and I can take all of these things out and I can work on them. And if it takes me a while to get them out, it's who cares? It's not costing me any money. I'm not having to rent a, a stump grinder, which is a great, great machine, but it makes a horrible mess. Yeah. I'm not gonna have to worry about that. I can pick them up, chop it into pieces, 
throw it in the burn pile, which just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh my gosh, that burn pile. <laughs> the burn pile we can't burn because there's crops right next to it. And I don't worried. want to interfere with I'm our farmers. I'm worried it's a home for somebody at this point. Well, they're not going to be too happy come uh, late fall. After Ugh. the cotton gets picked and those fields are bare, I'm burning that Have that a... big old burn pile and it's going to be seen for miles and miles around. But anyway, yeah. I, I'm so glad to be able to share that because I'm so happy about it. Who could be happy that I'm going to have backbreaking work to do over the next couple of weeks? Uh, I'm just glad to be able to have something that I can just go do by myself and it'll be a cure for uh, sitting I'll, on the chair. And I'll take pictures and upload them to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you know, some of them <laughs> I might be a little uh, red faced by the time it's done. But uh, but yeah, you do that and have fun with it. So <laughs> anyway, that's John's world for the day. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll hand it over to my lovely wife. She is the one that is able to close these things out without it taking three hours. Well, um, I really don't know what to say because we've said everything uh, that we wanted to talk about, but we will be in chat and we will chat along with you guys as far as, you know, during the premiere. <laughs> yeah, during the premiere. So thanks for watching and we will see you next time.